The 21st century has been an interesting time for football. Enormous growth, especially in Africa, Asia, and the women's game worldwide, has further solidified the game's status as the biggest sport in the world. The financialization of football has reached yet new heights, with transfer fees and wages reaching levels that would previously have seemed unimaginable, and various different governing bodies, whether that be national associations, continental federations, or FIFA themselves, have been shown to be hideously corrupt. On the pitch, though the club game has become more and more elitist, there have still been some remarkable upsets. Greece defied all of the odds to win Euro 2004, Leicester City went from relegation candidates to winning the Premier League in 2016, and Germany, yes, the relentless winning machines, went from winning the 2014 World Cup to getting knocked out in the group stage of both the 2018 and the 2022 World Cups. Whilst Brazil and Argentina won the World Cup in 2002 and 2022, the intervening 20 years was dominated by Europe, as football saw a further transference of power, particularly within the club game due to economic factors, from the global south and west towards Europe. Both tactically, and in terms of diet, nutrition, and the sheer amount of data involved in the game, whether that comes to scouting, opposition analysis, or even team selection, the game has undergone a revolution. It is a millennium in which we have been blessed with two of the greatest footballers of all time, whose careers just so happen to almost identically coincide, along with some of the greatest managers to have graced the game, and the latter stages of a few more. For the last 12 months, I have been taking a look at the greatest footballers since 2000 in every position. Today's video is the culmination of that work, as the top spot from each of those individual positional videos will be used to form an overall greatest 11 since 2000. The only criteria, in case you are new to the series, is the quality and quantity of a player's performances over the last 24 years, not their peak, sheer ability, longevity alone or anything else. At the end, just for a bit of fun, because I'm nothing if not incredibly fun, as you all well know, I'll also share what I think would be the greatest 11 one could possibly assemble, taking the balance of the team at every player's peak since 2000 into account, compare the two, and then I'll compare our greatest 11 since 2000 with the greatest 11 of all time, which was a series that I did six years ago. Jesus, I can't believe I've been doing this and calling it a job for over six years. Anyway, without further ado, who sadly failed to feature in either series, but will of course always be the GOAT in all of our hearts, and on Football Manager 2005, here is, based upon the greatest player in each position during the 21st century, World Football's Greatest Eleven since 2000. Goalkeeper, Gianluigi Buffon. A shoe-in, based upon the stated criteria of the quality and quantity of a player's performances since 2000, Gianluigi Buffon became the world's most expensive goalkeeper when he joined Juventus from Parma in 2001, and he only retired in 2023, back at Parma in fact, at the grand old age of 45. The most capped Italian and the most capped goalkeeper of all time, having represented his country 176 times, Buffon won the World Cup with Italy in 2006. That earned him a second place finish in Ballon d'Or voting that year, which is the closest any keeper has come since Lev Yashin's crown all the way back in 1963. At club level, Buffon made 975 appearances, about 850 of them post-2000, and 685 of them coming at Juventus. Buffon won 10 Serie A titles in Turin, not counting the two that Juve were stripped of due to the Calciopoli scandal, as well as losing three Champions League finals. That was the only trophy Buffon missed out on, whereas his rivals Manuel Neuer and Iker Casillas both won it. I often say Buffon didn't have the sweeping or distribution skills of Neuer, the reflexes of Casillas, or the sheer intimidation and presence of someone like Oliver Kahn, but as an all-round package, he was the pick of the bunch. A man with almost no outstanding weaknesses, Buffon's positioning and anticipation were perhaps his finest attributes, allowing him to play well into his 40s. He gets us started, and it is hard to imagine a more solid foundation upon which to build a team. Right back, Philip Lahm. 
The greatest right back of the 21st century, a bit like Gianluigi Buffon, Philip Lahm, was a man almost without fault. Frequently played at left back during his early years and in midfield during the autumn of his playing days, Lahm's combination of energy, awareness and technique meant that he could play almost anywhere. But it was at right back that he played most of his football. Pep Guardiola described Lahm as the most intelligent player that he ever coached, this coming from a man who managed the likes of Xavi, Busquets and Iniesta. Nicknamed the Magic Dwarf in Munich, where he won it all, Lahm made 517 appearances for Bayern, all post-2000, who were his only club other than two seasons on loan at Stuttgart. On the international stage, Lahm was capped 113 times and capped in Germany to success at the 2014 World Cup. He retired from the international stage following the World Cup in Brazil, aged 30, and from football as a whole in 2017, aged 33, so relatively young in both instances. But his body of work is still large and impressive enough for him to make a 21st century greatest 11. Centre-back, Sergio Ramos. A man who divides opinion, for somewhat inevitable reasons, no one can deny Sergio Ramos' talents or what he has achieved in the game. In fact, Ramos is one of the 20 most decorated footballers of all time and the 5th most decorated defender, having won both the World Cup and the Euros twice with Spain, a total of 7 league titles in France and Spain, 4 UEFA Champions Leagues and 14 other trophies. On an individual level, Ramos has made the FIFA Pro World 11 11 times, a tally which is bettered only by Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, and he featured every single year between 2011 and 2020. Not always the most level-headed, it would be fair to say. Ramos has also received the most red cards of any player in Europe's top five leagues post-2000, 29 in total, but he's also scored a fairly remarkable 141 goals from centre-back, most of them either headers or penalties. Ramos wasn't or isn't just a brilliant athlete, leader and front foot defender. He also had a useful habit of reserving his best performances and most clutch moments for the biggest of occasions. One of few footballers to have made more than 1,000 senior appearances and counting, including an incredible and record-breaking 180 caps for Spain, all of them coming post-2000, Ramos hits every single aspect of the criteria and was an inevitable inclusion. Centre-back, Carlos Puyol. The same centre-back pairing that won Euro 2008 and the 2010 World Cup together forms the basis of our greatest 11 since 2000. Well, that's not strictly true. Ramos actually played at right-back in 2008 and 2010, only moving to centre-back at Euro 2012, which Puyol missed due to a knee injury. But you get the idea. They both played a lot of games for Spain and were wildly successful. Interestingly, Puyol's success only arrived in his mid to late 20s. He didn't win any trophy, of any description, until the age of 27, when Barcelona won the 2005 La Liga title. And yet, by the time that he retired in 2014, age 36, Puyol was one of the most decorated defenders of all time, having won six La Liga titles, the World Cup and the Euros, the Champions League on three occasions, and nine other trophies. The leader that Barcelona needed in a team full of diminutive technical marvels, Puyol injected some much-needed nastiness and nous, and Barca were always a far better team with him than without. Left back. Ashley Cole. Actually quite a straightforward decision, owing to the fact that Paolo Maldini turned 32 in 2000, and as good as he was going forward, Marcelo was never in the same league as Cole defensively, dictates that Ashley Cole walks into this 11 without any great trouble. Though he perhaps didn't always endear himself with football fans as a whole, everyone, and especially his fellow professionals, had immense respect for Cole's abilities on the pitch. One of few players who managed to repeatedly pocket prime Cristiano Ronaldo, Cole was a left-back who could do it all. At Arsenal, he was immensely attacking and adventurous, playing a starring role in Arsene Wenger's invincible team, whereas at Chelsea, he committed forward with a little bit less frequency under Jose Mourinho, but was even more formidable defensively. England's most capped fullback of all time, and a rare player from the so-called Golden Generation, who always brought his club form onto the international stage, Cole completes our ironclad backline. Defensive midfield. 
Sergio Basquets. There have been a myriad of outstanding defence midfielders during the 21st century, from Angolo Kante to Xabi Alonso, and yet Sergio Busquets still somehow manages to stand out head and shoulders above them all. I was always told, and still hold it to be true, that the best footballers, the truly great ones, can do in one or two touches what everyone else can only do in three or four. It is that speed in transition and efficiency that allows for elite ball retention, dictating the speed and tempo of a game, and denying teams the ability to reset or reorganise when your team breaks. In that respect, as one of the most efficient footballers that the game has ever seen, Sergio Busquets is one of the greatest pivots of all time. It was fitting, therefore, that he should play that role in one of the greatest teams of all time, racking up over 700 appearances for Barcelona and winning 143 caps for Spain. The winner of some 35 trophies, including nine La Liga titles, three Champions Leagues, and both the Euros and the World Cup, Busquets now plays for Inter Miami in Major League Soccer at the age of 35. Central midfield, Xavi. It is a little bit absurd that only seven players into this 11, Xavi is already the fourth former Spanish international and the third player who is best associated with Barcelona. It is illustrative of what a ridiculous team Barcelona had, particularly during those four years under Pep Guardiola, where they were frequently unplayable and swept the floor with some of the best teams in the world. Xavi was the conductor in that side and, outside of Lionel Messi, Barcelona's most important player. A constant outlet who was almost never neutralised even when world-class players were tasked solely with doing just that, Xavi didn't just almost never sacrifice possession like Busquets, he was also incredibly efficient in possession and even more creative. He saw things at ground level that didn't even appear to be visible from the stands or the perspective of television cameras, and crucially, he had the ability to execute the pictures in his mind. In a career spanning more than 20 years, almost all of it post-2000, and the vast majority of it spent with Barcelona, Xavi made over a thousand appearances at club and international level, winning, you guessed it, both the World Cup and two Euros, eight La Liga titles, four Champions Leagues, and 18 other trophies. Right wing, Lionel Messi. The greatest footballer of the 21st century, in my eyes, and one of the two greatest, if not simply the greatest of all time, it seems a little bit needless to justify Lionel Messi's inclusion in this 11, so I won't spend long on him. In a career which has so far spanned 20 years, Messi has, so far, scored 826 goals and made 363 assists in 1,052 appearances, averaging a goal contribution every 73 minutes. That's ridiculous. At his most productive, Messi of course scored 91 goals and made 22 assists in 69 appearances in the calendar year of 2012, averaging a goal contribution once every 53 minutes. Though one could argue that he actually played his very best football and was at his most influential when he dropped deeper at Barcelona and still put up ridiculous numbers despite being the chief creator and playmaker in that side. The greatest passer, dribbler, and goal scorer of the 21st century, Messi is quite obviously the greatest right winger since 2000, and is one of the two most obvious inclusions in this 11. Attacking midfield, Ronaldinho. Messi's mentor during his early years at Barcelona, Ronaldinho may have burnt out much earlier than the Argentine, and make no mistake, his spot in this 11 was nowhere near as guaranteed, but I still don't think that there has been a better attacking midfielder, based upon the quality and quantity of their performances post-2000, than Ronaldinho. The man who made, or at least helped me and many other people of my generation fall in love with football, Ronaldinho, typified Brazil's O Yoga Benito style. He played football with a smile on his face, and he implanted a smile on the face of all those fortunate enough to have been able to watch him. Having broken through at Grêmio at the end of the 1990s, virtually Ronaldinho's entire career came post-2000. Outstanding for PSG, but at his best at Barcelona, Ronaldinho was one of the two best players in the world throughout his first four seasons in Catalonia. 
even after his focus waned, having achieved everything that he could ever have dreamt of, from winning the World Cup to the Champions League and the Ballon d'Or, Ronaldinho still had a sensational 2009-10 season at AC Milan, scoring 15 goals and making 19 assists, as well as enjoying tremendous seasons with both Flamengo and Atletico Mineiro. Left wing, Cristiano Ronaldo. Again, it probably doesn't require too much of an explanation. The only doubt about Cristiano Ronaldo's inclusion in this 11 is whether it would be on the left wing or up front. Ronaldo played more games on the left, hence he was included in the left wing video in this series, which he inevitably topped, and so here he is in this 11. The highest scoring footballer of the 21st century, Ronaldo has scored 879 goals in total across 1,212 appearances, as well as making 249 assists, giving him a goal contribution once every 88 minutes over a career spanning 22 years. The winner of everything except for the World Cup, arguably the greatest Champions League player of all time, and both the most capped and the highest scoring men's footballer in history, Ronaldo will be relieved to have Ashley Cole in behind him in this 11, not only because he's good enough that he doesn't have to track back, but also because it means that he won't be coming up against him. Centre forward, Luis Suarez. The sixth former Barcelona player in this 11, so that is over half of the team, the four greatest centre forwards of the 21st century, Luis Suarez, Robert Lewandowski, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Thierry Henry, all at some stage played for Barcelona. There is little to split them, as we went through in that centre forward video, but very narrowly, it's Suarez who came out on top. Not just a brilliant goal scorer, and the most prolific of the lot at his peak, ending Messi and Ronaldo's duopoly over the European Golden Shoe, when he scored 59 goals in 53 games in the 2015-16 season, Suarez was also a tenacious, and at times fairly violent competitor, who illustrated an ability to star as one third of the greatest front three of the modern era in a super team, but also to inspire a fairly average team to the verge of greatness at Liverpool through his own sheer willpower and ability. Between them, our front three, Messi, Ronaldo and Suarez, have scored 2,268 goals, and all three of them are still playing. So that is the 11, meanwhile the rest of the 23-man squad, based upon the players who finished second in each position, or second and third in terms of goalkeepers, and third and fourth place centre-backs, reads Manuel Neuer, Iker Casillas, Dani Alves, Alessandro Nesta, Thiago Silva, Marcelo, Casemiro, Andres Iniesta, Kaká, Mohamed Salah, Neymar, and Robert Lewandowski. Now, just for fun, here is the 11 that I would pick, based upon every player at their peak post-2000, and with the aim of creating an actually functional, effective team. Manuel Neuer starts in goal, I think his absolute peak was probably the most formidable of anyone's, and he had better distribution than Buffon or Casillas. I'm sticking with Alarm at right back, even though I was tempted to pick Dani Alves due to the incredible chemistry that he had with Messi on that right flank, but Lam isn't a convicted sex offender, so that's a big plus beside his name as far as I'm concerned. Alessandro Nesta, who I think, in terms of his ability, was the greatest centre-back of the 21st century, partners Virgil van Dijk, who is so formidable and complete at his best. Honestly, Prime Nesta and Van Dijk would be borderline impenetrable, and even if you get past them, you've got Pete Neuer to contend with. I've picked early 2000s Maldini, narrowly ahead of Ashley Cole for his leadership and class, but that one was a close call. Busquets and Xavi both retain their places, but I've picked Zinedine Zidane alongside the Catalans. Messi and Ronaldo obviously both start, but... Between them is another Ronaldo, Ronaldo Luiz Nazario de Lima, or the Brazilian Ronaldo, who is punished in the quality and quantity of performances post-2000 rankings by virtue of his finest form coming in the 90s and crippling injuries throughout the 2000s. But at his best, there was no one better this century, so he gets the nod for me. If you put those two teams side by side, obviously, I think that my organically selected team with everyone at their peak would win, but... It would be an extremely close game, which I think is testament to the fact that the positional series produced a fairly balanced team. 
Both teams, it should be said, would be managed by Pep Guardiola, who topped the managerial seven, and even if your one critique of Guardiola is that he has only ever succeeded with wonderful players, which is true, I mean, that is almost a strength rather than a weakness when it comes to coaching this team. As for the greatest since 2000 versus the greatest 11 of all time, well, I dug that bad boy out from six years ago, and it looks like this. Lev Yashin, Jalma Santos, Franz Beckenbauer, John Charles, Paolo Maldini, Jose Andrade, Diego Maradona, Garincha, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi and Pelé. With the benefit of hindsight, even though John Charles was basically the complete footballer, I would probably have Franco Baresi there instead of him, by virtue of Baresi spending his entire career at centre-back, though it's only a minor alteration. The post-2000 team definitely has better balance, with a pivot and a central midfielder, whereas the all-time team would leave Jose Andrade incredibly exposed, but the star power of Grincha, Maradona, Ronaldo, Messi and Pele is pretty hilarious. I suspect that would be too much for anyone, even the considerable talents of Larm, Ramos, Puyol and Cole to suppress, but I don't think that the modern greats would shame themselves in any way. Anyway, that is it for today's video, which is effectively the final instalment of this series. After this, as I did with my greatest Premier League players and 11 of the Premier League era series, I will make a compilation of all of the different videos and upload it, partly so that you've got everything in one video for convenience, and partly because the Premier League one has 1.5 million views and counting, which is pretty good going. Thank you all very much, as ever, for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video. I obviously sincerely hope that was the case. Let me know your thoughts on my team and this entire series down below in the comments. Any alterations that you might make or just abuse that you fancy hurling at me. And of course, it goes without saying, make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on, not just for this channel, HITC7s, but also importantly, my second channel, Alfie Potts Armor, both of which should be about to appear on your screens now. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, or threads via the username at HITC7s on all three, should you wish to do so. And all of those links, plus a whole lot more, should be down in the video description below. Cheers.